Stephen Hawking is afraid of aliens. Now, he assumes they're just trolling the universe, looking for worlds to conquer and resources to steal. Now, is his assumption true? I don't know. Maybe. It's not the goal of this presentation to figure that out. The goal of this presentation <laughs> is to convince you that regardless of their intention, everyone should hope that aliens are real because they may be humanity's only chance at survival. Now, what am I talking about? I'm not talking about some space-age alien technology of the Velcro caliber that'll usher in some era of energy independence or give us a Facebook dislike button. No, I am talking about bringing people together. I'm talking about team spirit, and I'm talking about team homo sapiens. Now, humanity currently faces a rack of issues. Climate change, decimation of biodiversity, finite fossil fuel supplies, just to name a few. I don't want to be an alarmist. Humanity's faced issues throughout its short history. The difference today is scope. So no longer are the consequences of our issues constrained by geography or social class. The issues we face today affect the entire population. And say what you will about globalization, but issues of this magnitude require solutions backed by the entire population. But how do we get there? Well, let's look at an example, the United States. What currently bonds Americans together in a shared goal? Is it common language? There's 337 languages spoken. Common religion? 313 practiced. Common politics? 123 different political parties. Now, I would posit to you that what holds us together as Americans is our common history. <laughs> Regardless of political, social, or spiritual view, all Americans are bound by the events that have occurred from the founding of our country to now. And this applies to groups of all sizes. Genealogy is an incredibly popular pastime because families love to discover and bond around their common history. Sports teams, project teams, they all bond around common successes, common failures. Even religion is built on a shared belief in a common history. Now this bonding mechanism is both a blessing and a curse for humanity. It's a blessing in the sense that it's gotten us to where we are today. Modern society would not exist without it. But it's a curse in that it not only drives our successes, it also drives our segregation. Now, as humans, we take macro histories and we break them down into micro histories. And we use these micro histories to categorize ourselves across all facets of life. It's because of this that countries and religions fight, cultures and races collide. But why do we let this happen? This happens because humans are alone at the top of the food chain. But we have an inborn need for competition. And since there's nowhere to go up, we go out and we manufacture competition amongst ourselves. Now, Aliens change the food chain. <laughs> if aliens exist, humans are no longer alone at the top. Aliens are beside us, maybe they're above us. That doesn't matter. What matters is our competitive paradigm changes. See, if aliens exist, we're no longer able to look at the world as a map broken up into countries full of Chinese and Australians and Americans and Germans and Nigerians. Now, we're forced to start looking at the world as a globe full of humans, with a shared human experience and a common human history. See, if aliens exist, we're no longer able to look at things through the lens of micro-history, and we're forced to embrace our macro-human history. And it's in this space that we'll address the global issues that currently threaten the very survival of our species. Now, we have to only to look to Hollywood for proof. Star Trek. <laughs> The series Star Trek, characters are referred to as humans, Klingons, Vulcans, Romulans. These are species-level categorizations. They've moved past their micro-histories, embraced the macro, and they were able to boldly go where no one has gone before. <laughs> Independence Day. Aliens invade Earth and almost destroy it. It's only after the Americans discover how to destroy the alien ships and then share that information with the rest of the world that we as humans are able to overcome our invaders. Look, space is big. The closest Earth-like planet up in the corner there is 20.5 light years away. To put that in perspective, Neptune, the closest planet in our solar system, 0 .000272 light years. Barely even makes our made-up scale up here. <laughs> now, why is that important? <laughs> that is important because aliens don't care about you. No self-respecting alien race is traveling 20.5 light years at a minimum to visit China or America. No, they're coming to Earth. If they're out there, they already look at us as humans, and it's time we follow suit. Now, I said I was going to convince you that we need aliens to survive. Do we? Do aliens have to exist for us to look past our micro-histories? Are we as humans incapable of coming together to solve global issues? My hope is no. So let's get started tonight. When you leave here, I want you to be acutely aware of the micro-histories that drive you, and I want you to look past them. 
If you're able to start looking at things through the lens of the history that we all share, that is when real human progress will occur. Thank you. I hope some of you will join us at the Bitter Bar after this, but here are the speakers. Thank you so much. It's been a fantastic night, and uh, Kia is celebrating a birthday. Happy birthday, Kia. Hey, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. They're already there. Awesome. Hey guys, as, as many of you uh, know, it was alluded to that Andrew Hyde will be uh, leaving the Republic of, uh, of Boulder on a, on a one-year journey. And from all the organizers, we were... We, <laughs> he's bound to have more of these good times in his future. But we, we were going to get him something, but then we realized that he only has 15 things with him, so he couldn't carry whatever we were going to get him. So instead, we thought the best going away present would be perhaps a salute, applause, or even a standing ovation for all that he's done for our community.